you can encourage you guys to follow them. Table pals. All right, guys. So this video here is about chunky children. <laughs> it's called Who's Really to Blame for These Junk Food Kids? Oh, well, you know, blame number one is probably the parents. Okay. Blame number two is probably a lot of the societal systems in place that normalizes a bunch of junk food. Okay, there's problems here. Got a lot of people. Uh, you can blame uh, sedentary lifestyles due to technology. There's a lot of places to blame. Britain's in the grip of an epidemic. A third of our children. Boy, it's Britain. I guess you can blame uh, uh, beans and crumpets or something. I don't know. Ugly people. <laughs> <laughs> what a terrible country. Now overweight or obese, and thousands have such bad diets that they're having to undergo major surgery. Ooh, Who's Jesus. to blame for childhood obesity? Well, according hey. to this UK documentary, Junk Food Kids, who's to blame? The parents are. Oh, I would say, like, largely, yeah. Ultimately, it comes down to the parents trying to make right decisions. I understand that the structures in the society, the structures of society are a big part of it, too, though. You know, like, not educating people on health. I feel like there didn't need to be as much as health. There didn't need to be as much of a health focus back in the day because people were actually moving around more. And so people started to grow up with technology. They had to move less and less and they started to gain weight and like, what's happening? You know, we need to teach like proper nutrition. It's it, technology is awesome, but there are some issues that come along with it. And one of those issues is like very sedentary lifestyles that need to be offset by like, you know, better uh, health practices. Of course it is parental responsibility. And of course, it would also be good, you know, if uh, like fast food uh, places didn't sell people disgusting, addictive poisons, you know, which is really what happens. And like refined sugar, there should be like a health tax uh, for like, I think, sh like shitty food like that, that they should use on healthcare and stuff and like funding, like uh, get off your fat ass programs in schools, you know. And it is their fault. I can't blame a parent openly saying it's your fault because, you know, you, you, we, well, that's defensive. not the type of society we live in. No, it's nobody's fault these days. Well, no, you know the parent's going to get defensive. Don't be a fucking idiot, right? Like, if you you can't just tell a parent that, like, your kid's fat because of you, it's all your fault. Because they're going to get defensive, and then they're not actually going to, like, handle the information. Like, being a professional is about, like, understanding the psychology of people, right? Any decent therapist understands that, like, when when, it's somebody, when a patient comes in, you sh you'll be able to very quickly identify the problem. And then at that point, you have to work to uh, make that person realize what the problem is. You can't tell them the problem, or they're going to get defensive, and they're not going to understand. You have to come to, like, that term. So, you know. Yes, people are very egotistical creatures, but, um, you know, you have to kind of play into that a little bit and make them realize it from a different perspective. You know, that's it. That's how it is. Parents can, for want of a better word, be in denial of the, the part they may have played. They definitely Fundamentally, play a it part. is parenting that's at the core of it. And to be fair, the parents in this video are pretty bad. Oh, yeah, very sure. unsympathetic crew here. There are some parents who will put their own convenience before the well-being of the child. This mom in particular is extremely hard to watch and it doesn't help that her daughter is extremely cute. <laughs> it's a bit tight. I honestly do not believe she's put all this weight on just through what she eats. Yeah, you're right. It's probably also from what she doesn't do, which is move apparently. Thyroid. No, that's not how these things work. There's nothing in the entire world that makes it impossible for you to lose weight. There can be things that make it difficult for you to lose weight, but even somebody with a thyroid problem is still going to be able to operate with calories in, calories out. And food and its thermogenic nature are going to play a pretty uh, big impact on that. Cutting down sugars uh, and also eating more protein-dense foods and like uh, macro or micronutrient-dense foods are going to have a much more positive impact on your body, right? Because the thermogenic nature of like proteins, it takes more energy to burn protein than I think fat and carbs. Thyroid, so, so it might be so much to do with that. Sweet little chubby Tallulah here is not only obese, but has a mouthful of abscesses and tooth decay because her mom Jesus. can't be bothered to get her to brush her teeth each night. Does she brush twice a day though? Or only once? Uh, it did. Sometimes it can be twice. But, but mainly a lot once. Of it just once. She's probably not brushing at all. And what are you feeding your kid where they're having like tooth rot? Jesus Christ. It's like it's a child for it. Why would you want to brush your teeth? Probably you can sit downstairs and watch a bit of, you know, Peppa Pig or. Yeah, true. Why don't you do make her do what she's supposed to do? Oh, yeah. Why would she want to brush her teeth? Oh, I don't know. Why would your kid want to do anything? Oh, because you force them to because they're a fucking child. You force your kids to do what, you, what they're supposed to do. That's what that's literally what it's all about. OK, oh, do something else. You know, it's I try not to judge on things like this because there's a lot of factors here that we're not discussing. But uh, every word that comes out of her mouth, this makes you so mad. It was easier for me you. on the night <clears throat> to give her a bottle of juice than to try and sit up with her all night and try and get back to sleep. I like to. 
bottle of juice is not going to put her to sleep unless she has a really bad relationship with sugar at her young age, right? And she's sugar crashing like instantly. Like that'd be fucking insane. And she must have an insulin problem, I, I think. Maybe I'm not a fucking doctor, but like that would wake her up if anything. What the hell are you talking about? You don't need to be giving her fucking juice. You shouldn't have dependencies on anything to fall asleep, especially when you're young. Like I understand when you get older, sometimes you might need to take melatonin. I get that, but as a kid, you shouldn't have these types of problems. All right. If your kid's not able to fall asleep at night, you, and if she's also overweight, probably has a lot to do with well, partially diet, but also not enough exercise to make her tired. Like that's one of the things kids need is exercise to make them tired. Understand this, yeah? Uh, just to have an easy life. I think everybody likes an easy life. But oh, do you think that parents like Tallulah's mom have never existed before in history? Because surely... No, but the, you used to have to move around more. So now these things can't become auto-regulated. You have to, like, motivate them to do more. They have. Of course they have. But just look at the childhood obesity rate. Here's the rate between 1963 and 2016. In just 50 years, it quadrupled to reach a whopping 20% of obese children. Type 2 diabetes used to be called adult onset diabetes because only adults got it. But they had to change the name because so many kids are getting diabetes now. Damn. They're developing diseases which we used to see only in adults. And I really think that this is a question that deserves more public consciousness. Why is everyone getting fat? Who is really to blame? But before we get into the video, a message from our sponsor. This My video mommy. is sponsored by Athletic Greens. I'm super excited to be working with Athletic Greens because I had actually been a customer. What is that? For quite some time before they reached out. Athletic Greens has created a movement around simplifying your health routine by using only one product, AG1. It's not just for athletes, it's for busy students, moms, dads, rookies. For is it a protein shake, a meal replacement? First timers and everyone in between. AG1 is nutrition made simpler. It's 75 vitamins, oh, minerals, fuck. probiotics, and antioxidants all in one convenient daily serving. This special okay. blend helps your body's nutrition needs and supports gut health, immunity, energy, focus, and healthy aging. Okay, cool. Well, I want to age like shit, so. AG1 is an back to the video. When surveyed, approximately 60 and 80% of people believed that parents and personal responsibility were primarily to blame for the rise in obesity. I mean, I guess that's a really, it's, I guess it's a conversation to have, like, what's the primary, the primary? I guess I wouldn't primarily blame the parent, but, like, that's the thing. Okay, I don't know how to express this well, so I'm just going to try. I don't think that parents are primarily to blame for the issue, but parents are the primary factor in correcting that, realistically speaking, right? Like, for instance, like being a fat person, like, like let's say for me, I'm fat. My, you know, my mother didn't exactly, uh, you know, she cooked a lot for me, but I overeat a lot. I would, I would overeat a lot and I didn't like learn the best, you know, nutrition, you know, but at the end of the day, now I'm an adult and I have the ultimately I'm the only one that can control this, right? I stress eat, but like this is my problem. So like, are there other outside factors? Yeah, but who has the most, who could do the most about my way is myself. So I don't know. I would say that maybe that'd be the primary, but I don't think you have to identify what the primary is. You just have to identify that like there's an issue and they have the most level of control over that issue. It's just to see like, do they care enough to actually implement something? But it seems like the mother is also fat, so. Denise and her parents have come to King's College Hospital. <clears throat> to find out whether she's suitable for surgery. But nearly 16 stones. Denise is double the weight a girl her age should be. 13-year-old Denise's parents also believe in personal responsibility. Surgery at 13? Oh they blame God. Denise's obesity on her lack of willpower and inability to stick to a diet. Well, you're also fat as fuck, so like, diet with your kid. I'm not trying to be rude, I'm also fat as fuck. Diet with your kid, idiot. Like, literally, you don't have willpower, so go walk with them. Oh, I don't, I don't want to walk either. <laughs> well, maybe it's, that's why your kid doesn't want to walk, because her fucking parents aren't doing anything either. You have to be active with your kid if you want them to be active. 15 minutes after leaving the hospital, Denise's parents take her for one last treat. She wow. Why? Oh, oh, my kid needs to lose weight. They're going to have a surgery at 13. That's more, that's insane. I would be crying. If I had my kid have a fucking surgery at 13. You're going to get them fucking McDonald's again? What do you think the problem is in the first place, asshole? What the fuck? Insane. Tried to lose the weight when she was 11. She tried to lose weight when she was 12, but uh, got uh, fatter and fatter. Here's a thought. Maybe that's because her prefrontal cortex isn't fully developed yet. Yeah, we keep on diet um, all three together. It was very good, but now we cannot keep. She cannot give up uh, at bread. She likes very much. And, uh... All right. So the reason your diet didn't work out is because of your kid. It's actually scary how both of these parents act so casually, like it's their daughter's fault that everyone in their family is obese. Yeah, I wonder how the daughter feels, like if she's being gaslit by her parents, like, you're the reason we're fat. I had a perfect figure before you were born. Yeah, I doubt it. The hospital sent through a detailed diet plan for the family to follow, but Denise's parents have yet to put it into action. 
Parents find it hard to keep to a diet. And that's why I can't start a diet because they find it hard. As a last resort for her obesity, Denise's family is considering gastric band surgery. He's come to the conclusion that the surgery will be more effective than their attempts to diet. But with the surgery, you don't have to give up of temptations. Yeah, you eat whatever you want. No, that's that's really not whatever you eat. No, I mean honestly, the surgery makes you so sick you don't want to eat. That's kind of more the reality there. Um, I'm just being real. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend surgery. I'd say because you, you still have to be healthy. Like you know, the thing is, after you eat, you have to maintain a very strict diet. Um, you're just like, kind of sick and you have a smaller stomach, so it's easier to manage. But you can still pop that band and stretch your stomach back out. It depends on like what surgery you get. I'm not super educated on them, but it's true. Um, bitch. It's not true. Denise doesn't even want the surgery either and seems to be afraid of it. It is so messed up. You don't want the surgery anymore. I wouldn't give a fucking 13 year old that surgery, dude. What the fuck? Did I work? Like, here's my thing with surgery. It's a drastic measure. So I understand if you're at the point where, like, your health is pretty significantly bad that you should implement that measure. I get that. But for a 13-year-old who's probably, like, their body can handle more of the stressors of being overweight, like, give let them lose weight naturally, you know? Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm okay with that. They kind of told the side effects, and I didn't like them. One of them was that I could die. And that it's a hell of a side effect. I want to die. Since her first appointment a month ago, Denise's family haven't managed to stick to the hospital's diet. Her parents think that surgery is her only option to lose weight. And then the documentary just ends. They don't tell you if she goes on to have the surgery or not. Like, bariatric no. surgery well, is a last result. Good. Kids shouldn't have that decision made for them because their parents don't want to go on a diet. Dieting, changing your eating style. It's about uh, the power of willing, you know. And uh, we demonstrate that we are not that strong. Are Denise's parents to blame for this situation? Absolutely. You could make a philosophical argument about ignorance here, but at the end of the day, they're not making an effort to change their diet and they're pushing her into something that she's telling them that she doesn't want. I say that's fair to cast blame in this situation. If 30 wasn't an option, I'd get fatter and be awful. I would be doomed. I found this entire documentary extremely difficult to watch. I feel so bad for this kid. I didn't even know if I was gonna make a video about it because it's just, it's so sad. But as enraged as I am at the situation and her parents, I can't help but feel that we've also failed her as a society. The thing is, Denisa and Tallulah- Jesus, this kid's huge. Sorry, I didn't mean to be rude, but damn. Aren't outliers, they're part of a growing trend. In every classroom, in every school in England or the UK, one in three children in that classroom will have a weight problem which will shorten their life and reduce the quality of their life. That's the scale of the problem. And when the cheapest, tastiest, most convenient, most heavily marketed, widely available food is also the absolute worst for our health, there is much more to the story than bad parenting. As an adult, I feel personally responsible for my health choices, regardless of the difficulty of the food environment we find ourselves in. But children are not responsible and they shouldn't have to pay the price if their parents are not willing or able to be the mediator. I don't think I've ever argued against personal responsibility in any capacity in my entire life, but here I am. Because you know who else loves a personal responsibility argument? The food industry. And somehow they've been almost entirely left out of this entire conversation. True, yeah. Even though they're pushing like super addictive unhealthy foods, man, it's fucked. Um, like, you know, obviously it's so cheap because the shelf life is so long because of all like the horrible fucking chemicals and preservatives they put in it. Parents are always responsible. Hey, what's going on? They have a responsibility. But they do have one. And it's one of those things where like, at the end of the day, you're not gonna be able to fix the system fast enough to deal with the problem. So you have to advocate for that personal responsibility. Like, but also while you try to change the system and like, you know, uh, create better programs for kids to like get active from a young age and get into a point where they enjoy, they have a positive relationship with getting active. That's a big deal too, you know, like get, getting them to have positive relationships with getting active, like picking up like hobbies and whatnot, um, you know, cooking for themselves, which, uh, you know, or, or learning to cook and et cetera, et cetera, learning about health and nutrition and diet. You know, these are all these things that, that need to happen. But so do other segments of our society as well. And that was pretty much the only reference in the entire documentary to any other group sharing in responsibility for the childhood obesity epidemic. When the question is, who's to blame? You can't just not talk about the food industry. Here's a paper that demonstrates the extreme lengths the food industry will go to to keep ordinary people in the dark about the reality of the food they're buying. To protect their commercial interests, food and beverage industry groups utilize many strategies such as actively lobbying governments, vilifying scientific evidence that does not support their position, funding research studies designed to support their position, and asserting that obesity is simply a matter of personal responsibility. That means the food industry uses 
I will say though, like first of all, like lobbyists can be really fucked. But second of all, we don't usually talk about computer. I feel like computers are like a really big factor in this. Like people are just chilling on their fucking phones nowadays. You know, like I, I do think that we need to talk about that more as a factor too. I'm not saying fast food isn't a big problem, but like sitting on your phone all day is also a big problem. It's immense resources, it's money, it's political pull to essentially subvert our ability to make informed dietary choices, while at the same time denying that they have any role to play in the obesity epidemic. In a full 20.5% of all email interactions with Health Canada, industry used the mechanism of shifting the blame and drawing attention away from industry, i.e. focusing on individual responsibility, the role of parents, or physical inactivity. Perhaps this is why only 35% of individuals selected the food industry as sharing in primary responsibility for the obesity epidemic. In the future, I'm not saying I will, but I might get diabetes and I might Probably not make will, it till I'm 30 or something. I can't help but feel that we owe children a food environment that isn't at least actively hostile to their health. And if their parents don't know what is or isn't healthy, or they can't afford healthy food, or they don't have the time that it takes to prepare it, then these kids are essentially being left to fend for themselves while they're actively die. and knowingly being exploited by the food industry. I went to the grocery store to see how much junk food was being directly and observably marketed to kids. First thing that greeted me, a school bus full of Oreos. Hey, that could be for anybody. Kids' characters like SpongeBob, Paw Patrol, and Scooby-Doo were being used to sell candy. I will say though, my school had a lot of Oreos on the school bus, all right? Oh wait, they didn't. They had a bunch of white kids that acted black, not black kids that acted white. Fuck. I got that joke backwards. Whatever. By the way, I'm pretty sure Paw Patrol is for kids between two to five years old. Is it not a little Damn. bit disturbing that they're trying to get two to five year olds to eat candy by How does a puppy dog put out fucking fires? Just piss on it? I don't understand. Partnering with their favorite character. Lovable minions were slapped on biscuits. And these children's cookies even had the audacity of pretending to be healthy by claiming to be full of veggies and fruits. Also the cereal, which is just rows full of fresh- <sighs> yeah, uh, gay hospitals full of veggies and fruits. Friendly and- <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Fun mascots used to market to children since the dawn of time, and countless other products all aimed directly at kids. I'm not even saying that kids can never eat these foods. I'm just saying it's a little bit messed up that the food industry is trying to have a conversation with kids whatsoever. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, it's, it's like almost on par with like fucking branding cigarettes towards kids. I mean, like really, food is like, some of these foods are really unhealthy for you and you have to fucking die from them, you know? Like we should start considering food like an addiction and it's tough to get over it because you have to eat, you know what I mean? And I think the satirical ad agency does a perfect job of explaining why this is such an issue. This is the first agency in the world dedicated to marketing food and beverages to children and only to children. Our research showed that their brains aren't fully developed yet. You'd think this would make our job harder. It actually made it a lot easier. The way we see it, sugar is like a drug for kids these days. I mean, they are basically addicted to the stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's studies that show that it's as addictive um, as... Like other hard drugs. Uh, which is great because our products are pretty much selling themselves. Which one sounds the most yummy? Rainbow! It's straight up predatory <laughs> nutrient nuggets. <laughs> behavior. And because of the millions of dollars spent on lobbying the government every single year, there is next to zero regulation standing in the way of these companies. It's just hard not to eat what you want to eat. Some people, like me, are just too, too addicted to junk food. It's like somebody's inside you and they're controlling you. Something like that. And then it's just addictive. And when you see something, you take it, you do it again and again and again. When the government considers doing its job and regulating things or even just pff, updating the food guide like we have here in Canada, the industry, quote, uses financial incentives to influence decision makers or threatens legal action against critics or public policies, as well as this entire list of unsavory activities here. You see how fruit juice is on the top rung of the food guide here, right next to regular old fruits and vegetables? That's the same crazy. juice partially responsible for Tallulah's rotting teeth. That one hurts me. That one hurts me. That one hurts me. All of them hurt me. Damn. That's so sad. According to this paper, when Health Canada considered removing it from the top rung, the food industry lobbied them, claiming it would negatively impact Canadians' health if they took it off there. And so despite the fact that we now know that juice without the fiber is not very healthy for most people, it remained True. on the top rung for years. Damn. Being an obese Did they eventually get it out there? That's fucking crazy, though, that they even left it on in the first place. It is not only unhealthy, but really hard. People bully me about my appearance. I get really mean things like you're ugly, uh, nobody likes you, cover your scarf with, sad, cover yeah. your scarf because you're killing everybody with your ugliness and that. It's Jesus, that's fucked up, man. It's really nasty. Yeah, you know, I just feel like that's something, like I have little boys will face like similar bullying as well, of course, but 
I don't know. I never faced that much bullying. I feel like little girls probably face more of that shit. But I could be wrong. But damn, that's sad. It's either way. It's fucking sad, bro. You know, I don't think it matters who faces it worse. It's just, that's fucking sad. I'd like to lose half my weight. That would be really good. And then I could stop worrying about everybody looking at me. Giving me dirty looks and that. Because that's what happens sometimes. But when the cheapest, tastiest, most convenient, heavily marketed food is also the most unhealthy food, then these stories aren't surprising. They are simple economics. Do you use kind of convenience? How much would you say? About 90%. 90% convenience? Yeah. Why is that? Because it's convenient. It's easy to string some messed up footage together of kids getting preventable illnesses due to neglect and conclude that parents and responsibility are to blame for childhood obesity. But this is a very complex issue. It's more than just parents. It's more than just the problem too is that like that little girl that like is being bullied for her weight, she's gonna turn to food as her cope. It's like this fucking continuous cycle. Like you know, somebody's overweight, they use, they like to eat food. It makes them feel better. They start getting insulted, so they eat more food to make them feel better, and then the cycle continues. That's why bullying is like a really big deal when it comes to like dealing with fat people because it motivates them to, or demotivates them. It motivates them to eat more, to stress eat more. You know. Um, that's why fat bastard said it best. He's like, I eat because I'm unhappy and I'm unhappy because I eat. You know, it's some real ass shit, motherfucker. It's some real shit. It's true. Real ass shit. Personal responsibility. There are countless stories on Reddit of parents claiming that they've never bought their kid junk food and yet their kid is addicted to it. Yeah, well, they fucking buy their kid junk food. So I don't believe that for a second. Get the hell out of here. It's just a little suspect to me if you make an entire documentary with the subtitle, Who's to Blame? And then you don't even mention the food industry whatsoever. Obviously, I barely scratched the surface on any of this, but I have an upcoming video, upcoming in the distant future. I don't want to give it all away just yet. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Oh. Well, the great thing about uh, children is that there are new ones born every day. So if you have a product that uh, you would like to get some sticky little hands on, let's talk. Jeez. Like something else, huh? The truth about eating shit. I want Papa Gut to pee on my face, but just as a friend, there's nothing weird about that. I want him to pee on my face.